Good afternoon. My name is David Schottenstein. I live with my wife, Ida, and four children in Miami, Florida. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, with my older brother and three younger sisters. I'm an entrepreneur, perhaps addicted to being an entrepreneur. My passion in business has always been creating and getting involved with new, with exciting consumer products that put a smile on people's faces, preferably with an affordable price. My passion in life is my family and giving staka. I'm not going to dive into an extensive business history, but suffice it to say, I've been very fortunate and, I, and have and continue to receive the Rebbe and Hashem's blessings. I have come here today not to speak to you about all the valuable lessons I learned from successes along the way, but I came to share a message with everyone here today, a lesson that I learned from a failure, from a specific failure, a moral failure, a lapse in judgment, a specific bad decision. Throughout my business career, I've always been around people in the know, high-level executives, many of whom worked for publicly traded companies. I've heard lots of things along the way, and I never acted on them, knowing that it's illegal and wrong, against the law. Yet somehow, in late 2017, I faltered. I was exposed to some information, and I quickly convinced myself that it wasn't really inside information. It was perhaps a gray area. But I rationalized it, and I justified it to myself, and I traded on it. Despite justifying it, I knew that it was wrong enough that I didn't want to talk about on the phone about it. So my wife asked me, why are you going to see this person in person? Why don't you just call them on the phone? And I told my wife, some things better not to talk about on the phone. My wife gave me a hard, sharp look and she said, if you're doing something you can't talk about on the phone, why are you doing it? You're an entrepreneur, you've been successful, you've done amazing things, why would you do anything that's remotely questionable? Why would you go there? That was a lightning bolt moment that snapped me back into shape. I immediately turned over all of my trading accounts to money managers so that I wouldn't be anywhere near it. I didn't even want to have the temptation. I calculated how much money I had made from these questionable trades and not wanting to have that money sit in our account, we gave that much extra money away to Tzedakah in 2018 above whatever our normal giving percentage would have been. But here's the question. Why did I need to be snapped out of it by my wife? How did I get there? How did my moral compass falter like that? When I look back at that short window and I try to figure out what was different then, how did I get there? There are a few different things that come into the picture, a person that I was associated with at the time, etc. But none of that really matters. At the end of the day, it's on me. The buck stops with me. I own it, I did it, and it's 100% on me. One thing I know is that when you know where your brachas come from, when you, when, you know, when you know where your blessings come from, you will never experience that type of lapse in judgment. When you know that everything comes from Hashem, you will never ever go there. I don't think that this topic gets enough attention at seminars like this and at events like this. I've been to many and I've spoken at many and the topics always range from why it's important to give tzedakah, how to build a new business and all sorts of other important topics. And these are all great. These are all things that we should talk about. I remember when I was first starting out, I went to hear a very successful businessman, prominent businessman speak about giving tzedakah and how it enriched his life and it helped him. It actually made his business better, etc., etc. And I internalized that. Giving became my number one priority. When I sold my first company, I actually did it because I needed money to pay for a Chabad house. Some very well-deserving shluchim who needed a Chabad house. But I really wish someone had spoken to me about the importance of bitachan and faith. 
and how that ties into always operating the 100% straight and narrow path. If you are connected to God, if you are connected to Hashem, if you have real trust, it literally becomes impossible to make the type of bad decision I made. In the absence of Hashem, we make space for arrogance, which paves the way for bad decisions. I'd like to refer to a safer that has become a cornerstone in my life, in my wife's life. We started learning it together when the you-know-what hit the fan. The gate of trust, Shar Bitachan. We are taught very clearly that every single thing that happens comes from Hashem, from God. We are taught very clearly that it is predetermined how much money we're supposed to make and how successful or unsuccessful we're supposed to be. Our job is to simply create a vessel, a clean, honorable, law-abiding vessel, and let Hashem fill it with bracha. That's it. Nothing else. Think about this for a minute. We know that Hashem determines on Rosh Hashanah how much money you're going to make that year. So let's say Hashem decides that you're going to make X amount of dollars this year. Do you really think that by engaging in something questionable, you're going to increase that predetermined amount by 10% or 20%? Do you think Hashem is going to reward you for that? And he's going to say, oh, this guy did something he shouldn't have done. I'm going to give him a little extra. There's no chance. Throughout my business career, I've been presented with situations over and over again where the 100% right thing to do seemed like the more expensive thing to do. I'll actually share a story. My first company, Astor & Black, we'd been selling clothing for about five years, and we were doing an internal meeting with our accountants, and the accountant said, you know, you've been traveling to these five states to sell clothes, and even though you don't have an office there, you don't have what's called Nexus, you should start collecting and remitting sales tax. And I remember saying to the attorneys, well, what about the past five years? I haven't been doing that. Well, they said, first of all, it's a question whether you're even obligated to do it because you don't have any physical presence there. Second of all, the chances that you would ever be audited are less than 1%. You can just go now, register, and start paying on a go-forward basis. And I remember I asked my accountant, his name is Doug Mayer. I said, Doug, how much do you think, what's the, what's the exposure? What do you think we owe for the past five years? And he did the math and he gave me the number and it was a, it was a substantial number. Especially at the time, I was really building my business. That was money I could use for marketing, for all sorts of other things. And, but I said, let's go self-report. Can we get a payment plan? We could pay them over time. Let's pay it back. I don't want that on my head. I don't want, and we did it. And it felt really, 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 didn't feel good. It felt lousy, like, wow, I'm just like paying this money and I didn't really necessarily have to. I could have, what ended up happening was three years later, when we were in due diligence to be acquired, there was something that came up and the buyer said, look at what he did back in 2008 when he paid that tax. He even have to pay that tax. We're good, no issue, and the deal got done. And that deal never would have gotten done, I can tell you, without question. And I've seen this in an open and revealed way on so many occasions when confronted with making the right and seemingly more expensive choice versus taking what appeared to be a shortcut. So if anything, by behaving in a way that isn't appropriate and cutting a corner or going into a gray area or chas v'shalom, a really black and white wrong area, Hashem removes him. What you're basically doing is you're displaying a lack of trust, a lack of bitachin, because you're saying, I need to do this to make extra money. And Hashem will remove himself from the equation, God forbid. And when Hashem removes him from, when God removes himself from the equation, you're on your own. If I had really been connected during that short period of time, years ago, the minute something questionable came up, I would have immediately moved on, said, nope, not for me. And what's interesting is when you learn Shara Bitachan, it doesn't just say that we should only do things that are legal and straight. Even things that are legal, that are maybe in industries that are less than savory, we should try and avoid. So, Allah has come of a come, how much more so, right? We should avoid something that's wrong. This principle of having complete bitachan and always conducting yourself in the right way does not just apply to big decisions, it truly applies to every area in our lives. So going back to my own story now, that one terrible decision from years ago 
came back to haunt me years later and in ways I cannot even begin to describe. Almost four years later, I was approached by the government. I'm going to skip a lot of it and get to the part where I pled guilty to one count of insider trading. It isn't just, it's hard to describe what follows, but it's hell on earth, living hell on earth. And it's not just the ridiculous, massive pile of legal bills that you're faced with. It's not, the, it's not even just being faced with the possibility of being separated from your family, God forbid. All sorts of other things happen that you can never imagine would happen. From wildly false accusations being hurled at you, to watching your wife and children be humiliated and degraded in public, to all sorts of other horrific things I don't even want to talk about. 18 months of one horrible thing after another because of one stupid, bad decision. I'll share one particular episode, one of many, that maybe illustrates the type of pain a bad decision like this can cost you. <sighs> Preparing for sentencing, I had to reach out to friends, family, and people I've done good for to write letters to Judge Woodlock, sharing their thoughts about me and about my character. Obviously, you're not going to ask your children to write letters for you because they've been put through enough and you don't want to put them through anything else. Yet my 18-year-old son, learning in yeshiva in Yerushalayim, decided to sit down and write his own letter. Imagine how that feels. To think that you did something that has now put your beautiful, precious child in a position where he is begging for mercy on behalf of his father. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. It's gut-wrenching, and the shame I felt from that alone is hard to live with. And all because I was lacking in bitachin. All because of a terrible, stupid, pointless decision from years ago. And even if you do something improper and it's not discovered, you still have to live with the fact that you've done something wrong, that you've demonstrated a deficient level of bitachin and eibishter and Hashem, and you're not ahead of the game, you are certainly behind it. So when it comes to making business decisions, whether it's tax related or anything else under the sun, just ask yourself this one question. Can I say that what I'm about to do is 100% right? Because if I can't, then I have to treat it like it's 100% wrong. There's no in between. Would I be comfortable with what I'm, about to be, what I'm about to do being printed on the front page of the New York Times the next day? If the answer is no, run in the opposite direction. We live in an amazing country that affords us with opportunities to, suc to succeed. Opportunities that previous generations, our forebears, could only have dreamed of. All we need to do is follow the rules and do our very best. It's never worth breaking the law. You and your family and beyond will, God forbid, pay a horrible price. I'm going to finish with this. Since I'm here sharing what I believe to be are the most important lessons I've learned in my life, I would like to touch upon one more thing. When we are challenged in life, when something bad happens, like what I just described, there are two very distinct ways to respond. And they're diametrically opposite from one another. The first path involves self-pity, where you play the victim, you wallow in despair, and you point fingers at everyone else around you for what's happened. Nothing good comes from that. Zero. No growth, no positive change, just more misery. The second, the one that I took, partly because I was forced to do so by my very significantly better half, is one of self-reflection, one involving full acceptance and responsibility and strength and resolve to make sure that I emerge from the horrible experience stronger and better. Every single thing happens for a reason, and nothing is put in front of us. No challenge is given to any one of us that Hashem has not given us the abilities to deal with. These are all growth opportunities. Learning Sha'ar Bitachin, doing that every morning with my wife, is one aspect of this process. Another part is standing before you today, very humbled, and speaking very candidly about my own experience in the hopes that when you are faced with the decision to make in business and in life as well, you think back to the speech and you make the best and right decision. I plan on continuing to spread this message to as many people as I possibly can. And to any of you who are mentoring young people, I beg of you to please do the same. 
I feel horrible about a horrible decision, a terrible decision, but I'm committed to taking this horribly negative experience and doing my best to turn it into a positive. Thank you for having me today, and may Hashem bless all of you with open and revealed good in every single thing, in every single area of your lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay.